Imagine you're one of those people that punch like this. Ah! Ah! So lame. What you want to do is you want to put your whole body, your whole hip into it. So it comes from the ground. Your feet are going to pivot and you're going to punch like this to get as much reach and power as possible. Same thing if you throw something. You don't want to throw things like this. Uh, you want to throw things like this. Yeah. 10,000 euro? Yeah. I am never going to financially recover from this. So today we're obviously going to talk about foreign politics. No. We're going to talk about hip rotation, hip power, which I like to divide in a couple of categories. So you got the body weight, you got the hip strengthening or the anti-rotation and anti-flexion, which you can do with a lot of weight on you. And you have the explosive stuff like throws or rotational movements. So we're gonna go through it all. And these are my favorite go-tos whenever I want to do stuff like kicking. So, so, because you need good torque, good rotation to a lot of sports especially when you got a lot of unilateral stuff that you're doing. So not only twisting for, I don't know, acrobatics, but also tennis, volleyball, or badminton. You pussy. So of all these exercises that I'm about to give you, you're gonna choose two or three at the most of each to do in each training session. But you're only gonna do twice a week. No more than that. Because if you're already on the field or on the ring and training, I wouldn't say that that would be a lot of volume to work on the hip and you don't need much more than that. You, oh, what you wanna do is you wanna increment your power and your torque and not really tire it. So we're gonna start with the body weight movements. I saw this movie once when I was younger called College Kickboxer, which is a martial arts B movie. Your waist is weak, therefore your kick has no power. And the master in the movie talks about two exercises that I actually used to do quite a lot in my wushu practice because I started practicing Kung Fu when I was nine years old. So these exercises are not only good for you to warm up, for example, but they also are very, very explosive and a little bit challenging for you to do body weight wise. So the first one is the Kung Fu rotation, in which your feet are spread wide apart. You're gonna keep and place your feet on the floor and you're gonna rotate from one side to the other. So you start, for example, turning to the left and you keep your arms straight, you're gonna go up. Then the other arm passes through, I'm gonna rotate to the right. And from here, I'm gonna dip down and rotate once again and my other arm comes along. Then I'm gonna start and do to the other side. One, two, three, four. So this is pretty difficult to do in high intensity, so I'm gonna show you a couple of repetitions in high speed. So the idea is for you to work on the technique in order not to hurt yourself. If you have to bend your knees a little bit, it's okay, but really try to do it as fast as possible because it really helps you create good torque in the waist. One, two, The second exercise from the same movie is you jump up and let's say your left foot goes from behind to the right side. The left hand will go exactly to the right side as well, trying to touch and reach that foot. So it's a little bit awkward at first, but you're gonna really understand how to really torque the hip as fast as possible because you have little time. Next, we're gonna talk about throws and we're going in increments. That means that Usually the body weight pieces are the ones that I do first in order to actually warm up and stuff. And then I will go to my more explosive exercises and only the strengthening exercises in the end. So you gotta keep yourself the freshest when you're trying to do stuff like this. So I, I need a ball. I'm always flabbergasted at those people who use the med balls only for wall balls, like 300, 301, 302. That's right, Samantha. But truth is, I must rather have a lighter wall ball in order to really throw the heck out of it with the right amount of weight, either six kilos, which is like, a, I don't know, 12, 12 pounds, 11 pounds, something like that, 
six kilos or four kilos, which is like maybe nine pounds. And that really gives me the best explosive motion to throw it against the wall. So I can do it in a couple of ways that are my favorites. I can always pivot the feet and I can throw it sideways if it, as if it were a rugby pass or something, or I can extend my back arm in order to do it as if I were trying to punch somebody. I also can use slam balls for the effect and not only throwing it as far away as possible, but I also can do some sort of rotation and then slam it on the floor. So doing the full rotation 360 and then slamming it on the ground. So with the throws, you're actually throwing as far as possible and the object is leaving your hands, obviously, but now you have the rotation movements. And on the rotation movements, one of my favorite uh, pieces is the landmine. With the landmine, I have two favorite types of exercises. So the first one is the rotation using the pivoting of the feet. So you go from one of the sides of your hip to the other with slightly bent arms, always pivoting the feet. And the other way is planting your feet on the floor, facing forward, not using the feet at all, just slightly bending the knees and going from one side to the other. And you're gonna feel that hip rotation stopping or the, the stoppage of the movement in a better way. Also, I don't do these exercises with a lot of weight. Sometimes I use the uh, female uh, Olympic barbell because I want to get in touch with my feelings. You know, the yin side and not just the yang. No, it's really because either with the throws or either with these exercises, I want to be as explosive as possible. I'm working on quick movement. I'm not working on, oh, okay. So it's not a really a strength portion of the movement. It's a, a, an explosive movement, that is. Next. If you don't have a landmine, you can use a plate. And instead of doing it like this, up, you know, because of the, Landmine usually works in a 45 degree angle. You can go from here and you can try to double punch somebody in the face, like a hook punch, you know, like this. From, from the uh, one side of the waist, you pivot the feet and you go from one side to the other like this. Bah! Okay, so this is a very effective exercise, but also one of my favorites is when you actually have your arms extended and you go all the way doing a sort of a roundabout, the 360 movement with the plate, keeping your feet flat on the ground. And whenever you reach the starting position, you go all out again. So it's got like a couple of speeds in this movement alone. Check it out. You can really see and feel the tension on the hip and on the core whenever you're doing this exercise. I love it. Also, you can do great rotational exercise with this toy. No, it's, it's a kettlebell. I really like to do the rotation with a kettlebell in which I do a half circle coming from the bottom, always pivoting the feet and you don't have to reach higher with the kettlebell than shoulder level. The other kettlebell exercise is this sort of rotational snatch thingy. So you have your left leg forward and your right arm will do the work and the, uh, the bottom leg or the bottom foot will have its heel high up. And from there, you're gonna to torque using the glute power as well and go to this snatch final position in which you are about three quarters, but keeping steady straight. And last of the rotational exercises, the hammer, the sledgehammer. I love that. I wanna be a sledgehammer. Why don't you call my name? Da, da, sledgehammer. Why don't you call my name? And you can kill your mother-in-law with that. It's great. Excuse me, sir. Are you a farmer? Here's a couple of acres. Hey, you want to be a farmer? Here's a couple of acres. We're in the final portion of our video in which I'm gonna show you my favorite exercise to work on anti-flexion, which is the unilateral farmer carry. If you do the unilateral farmer carry or suitcase carry, you're gonna have such a huge load on one of the hands 
that your body will want to go flexing, will want to torque to that side. You can't let it go. So it's like a alcoholic test, you know, to see if you're sober from the police. So you gotta keep a straight line walking while you're holding that weight. And you know, that'll do wonders for all the hip and waist integrity that you need and the strength in order to really have a good solid punch. So there you go. Let me know how this is going for you. Remember to choose about two exercises per session and doing maybe two sessions only a week, no more than that and see how it goes and let me know in the comments section as well. Also, like, share, subscribe and give me ideas for our next videos. I wanna help you be Willow Strong. So, and uh, torque it up. <laughs>